Today I've got a ton of stories to cover, but I also have Black Friday deals. Seems like they're coming sooner and sooner. Either way, I thought I'd do this style video so I could get it out as quickly as I could. With that said, we also have Threadripper 7000 reviews. Nvidia is going to run out of stock. The RTX 4090 has vanished and Nvidia is preparing their first ever MCM gaming GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mouth. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, like I said, Black Friday deals are already here, so I thought I'd go over some of my favorites. And of course, if you're interested in any of these, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Starting things off, as you can see, we have the 12,700KF, a 12-core CPU from Intel that, yes, is last gen but it's 23 percent off at a pretty good deal and as you can see this is a pretty significant price drop from not too long ago even its lowest point that it was a little while back so definitely not a bad deal with that said if you want something a little bit newer we have the ryzen 5 7600x which is currently 219 with an additional ten dollars off coupon next up and this is something i've actually been saying for a little while now prices on ssds even the much faster nvme ssds have dropped significantly as you can see we have a crucial p3 4 terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 that's right now just $179.99. Once again, that's 4 terabytes PCI Express 4.0, definitely a really good deal. And lastly, I actually have one of the main monitors that I use every single day, this LG Ultra Gear 34 inch Quad HD. This actually is an IPS panel. I had gotten some VA panels before that, really didn't like them. With that said, I have heard that they've gotten better, but this really wasn't even that long ago. And I did not like it at all. I hated spending so much money for a monitor, but I haven't looked back. Now I will say it doesn't have the best HDR with HDR 400, but it does have G-Sync and 144 Hertz. And this bad boy is 27% off Regular $749.99 to $544.99. Once again, I personally have this monitor and I really like it. And while talking Black Friday, I've got a gym you've got to take a look at. Ever dreamt of having your own starry night right inside your room? Well, get ready to explore today's sponsor with the amazing Galaxy Projector with me. It isn't just a light. It transforms your room into an enchanting planetarium, seamless, colorful projections and stars. Too many to count. And Galaxy Lamp's Black Friday sale is already on. It's not just about looks though. It's smart too, because its colors, brightness, rotation speed, and timers are all in your control. With its user-friendly app, you can tweak everything to match your mood. It's customization at its best. Oh, and it works with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant for a hands-free experience. And guess what? It's energy efficient too. The Galaxy Projector is not just a gadget. It's a modern masterpiece with a classic charm, perfect for any room and any vibe. The clock's ticking on Galaxy Lamp's grandest Black Friday sale. So swing by Galaxy Lamp store. It's now or never to secure the Galaxy projector at an unprecedented price. And next up for today, as you can see, reviews have dropped for AMD's new Threadripper 7000 CPUs. These are specifically the HEDT CPUs, so they only go up to 64 cores, but it's still massively impressive. I'm actually going to go over a few of these benchmarks and you'll really see what I'm talking about. First up, we have Cinebench R23, multi-threaded of course, and you can see here we have the Threadripper 7980X, 64 core, 128 thread, 350 watts, so it is higher power draw than last gen and it's really expensive at five grand, but check out this performance. They actually compared it to two generations back, and that's actually because the last generation only had pro models, but this time they've brought back their regular Threadripper CPUs, and as you can see, even 64 core versus 64 cores, we're talking right at double the performance. We're looking at nearly 100,000 points versus 58,201, and that's just two generations, so it's not like it added a ton of cores or anything like that. Once again, this is purely 64 core versus 64 cores, and actually you can see that the 32 core 7970X, which is quite a bit cheaper than the 3990X was when it came out, and it still beats it. So we're talking half the core count here. Seriously impressive, 
And when we move on down the line, we can see some very similar stuff. We actually see Intel Xeon W9-3495X. This is nearly a $6,000 CPU, and yet the much cheaper 7980X significantly beats it. And that's actually at a TDP of 350 watts for both. So this is definitely an impressive CPU. Once again, it is extremely expensive, and because of that, I would not suggest this for anything other than if you really need an extremely high core count CPU, and it's actually gonna make you money. That's really pretty much the only way that you could justify this. I definitely don't suggest this for personal use unless you really need a ton of PCI Express lanes or something along those lines. And that's because if the application can't utilize all of these cores, you're much better off with a lower core count CPU that'll have higher clocks. Moving on, we have Cinebench 2024. Completely, the 7980X completely crushes the Xeon here as well. Then we have this right here, and this is a really good example where a lower end CPU can actually do better. You can see that the 7970X and 7980X perform worse than the 14900K or 7950X 3D. So basically what I suggest is that you look at reviews, you look at the exact application or applications that you're gonna be using this for and determine if it's worth that price difference. Simply put, a lot of applications are not gonna scale all that well all the way up to 64 cores. And next up for today, I recently covered a story that effectively claimed that NVIDIA was halting production on their RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti to make room for their upcoming supercards. Well, it looks like the inventory that NVIDIA shipped for Q4 isn't enough. As you can see down here, it states this is once again coming from board channels, and you can see that when it comes to the 4080 series, NVIDIA did not allocate a significant quantity of GPUs in the Q4 quarter. Consequently, the inventory levels at various AIC manufacturers are very low. It is anticipated that by November, so really, really soon, the inventories of graphics card brands will be depleted and cleared. That's for the 4080. The 4070 Ti says the last batch of shipments from NVIDIA in the Q4 quarter was not substantial. Based on the current inventory situation of AIC brand manufacturers, it's expected that clearing the inventory will be swift with a possibility of completion as early as November and at the latest by December. Once again, according to rumors, NVIDIA is planning to release their supercards at CES which is in early January, and of course that may just be the announcement. We don't actually know when the actual release date will be. It could be later or it could be then. But regardless, that's in January, and some of these cards, they could run out by November. Ultimately, this doesn't seem like NVIDIA planned very well, and if you're wanting to purchase one of these cards, you may want to do it fast, though personally, I would definitely suggest waiting on the Super Series. With that said, if you're hoping to purchase a 4090 and you're in China, you are completely out of luck. If you've been following this channel, you know that America effectively put a ban on the 4090 making its way to China as well as the H100 other GPUs. And because of that, it looks like Nvidia has now completely removed the 4090 from their Nvidia China website. You can actually see it right here. It says RTX 40. This is their 40 series. RTX 4080, 4070 Ti, 460 Ti. Okay, no 4090. Unfortunately, because of that, we have seen prices increase quite a bit, even in the US and of course, definitely in China. But basically, NVIDIA has completely erased the GPU. And lastly for today, NVIDIA has been discussing MCM or multi-chip module GPUs for years now. You can see this actually goes all the way back to 2017. And so far, they haven't really done it. The H100 is a massive monolithic GPU. Well, in a new video from Red Gaming Tech, he actually talks about NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series. And according to him, he's actually hearing that NVIDIA is sort of planning two separate releases for the high-end cards. Their first release coming around the end of next year, we're talking December, so very late towards the end of next year, but then another in 2025. And in 2025, according to him, NVIDIA could actually release, right now they're working on their first MCM GPU for games. And to quickly recap, if you're not sure why MCM is all that important, remember that it's what AMD did with their Ryzen CPUs to get a ton of performance at 
pretty much an unheard of price. And the reason that helps us so much is because there's effectively a theoretical limit as to how big a die can be without it being just astronomically expensive. And the reason is because the bigger a die gets, the higher chance something goes wrong and you have an issue and either have to throw it out or bin it for a lower end card. This is effectively solved using an MCM approach. It would also allow us to get much faster processors as well because you can make them even bigger. Think about AMD's Threadripper CPUs and how just massive they are. So if Nvidia is able to bring this to their GPUs, they could basically make a monster card. And in fact, Red Gaming Tech is actually hearing that they could be combining two GB202 GPUs into one. That's the GPU that the 5090 is set to be made from. So imagine two 5090s combined into one. Now it will be unbelievably expensive, but man, will it be powerful. And what's wild is that we actually have a couple things that sort of backs this up. Starting with the fact that a little while back, Copite 7 Kimmy claimed that the GB100, which is their accelerator, so not their gaming cards, but don't forget that they're made on the same architecture, he claims that it's finally going to use an MCM. Not only that, but he also claimed that the 5090-5080 Founders Edition should have a similar composition structure than this massive 4090 Ti slash Titan card that Nvidia canceled. So the Blackwell architecture can support an MCM GPU if this is right, and they could be using a massive card. Remember that this thing is just gigantic. We're talking a four slot GPU. And this at least somewhat points to what we're hearing from Red Gaming Tech. Of course, with that said, they could end up canceling this card just like they did with the 4090 Ti slash Titan, whichever it was going to be called. So it may never get released, but this is definitely interesting and it's set to be one exciting GPU. So while that does it for today, if Nvidia does end up releasing this monster MCM GPU, how much do you think it would cost? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff, and as always, have a great day.